With the phenomenal success of Tetris, the early 90s had everyone and their mother trying to be the next big puzzle game, with all manner of bizarre and nonsensical games. You had the likes of your Klaxes and your Zoops. Heck, even Tetris' own creator, Alexei Pajanov himself tried to catch a lightning in a bottle again, with increasingly terrible derivatives. I mean, hat tricks, Lexi! Jesus! Have some self-respect, man! Only, it's only a game! Why do you have to be mad? However, one game that tried to stand out from the crowd was Time Warner's PC title, Endorphin. A puzzler where you guide a cube around a tile-based map, collecting coloured squares on the floor by matching them up with the top face of your block. It had kind of been done before, such as with the Japanese Game Boy game Koro Dice. But the big spin was Endorphin would complement you with subliminal, body-positive messages throughout playing. I feel joyful now. I love being alive. I can do anything. I feel joyful now. Barely being recognisable through your speakers. You didn't hear it, but your brain did. Now, you'd think a non-violent video game that rewarded you with self-positivity would be a good thing. Right? Especially nowadays, probably would be Kotaku's Game of the Decade had it been released today. But not in the early 90s, however. Oh, no siree. Subversive positivity was the mark of the devil, according to the press, making all manner of insane claims, such as these hidden statements would mentally corrupt your precious offspring. CBS and CNN in the US were all over the story, and even the BBC got into the controversy, interviewing a very early example of a Karen, think of the children, Ing. What they're trying to do is to affect the child's mind beneath the level of consciousness, and that seems to me an immoral thing to do. In fact, a lot of the news pieces fixated on how unethical it is to subconsciously manipulate people through subliminal messages in the game despite the fact it quite clearly states it does, on the back of the box. How is it subliminal if they tell you they're doing it exactly? The press also twisted the narrative that video games are solely for children too. Despite, thanks to the likes of Mortal Kombat and Night Trap, age ratings on games had been a thing for at least a year by that point, even longer in the UK. Now, to play devil's advocate, the complaints did hold some validity. Subliminal messages are illegal in other forms of entertainment, such as television and radio. But with laws always playing catch up with new media, it was perfectly legal to use it in the realm of video games. And actually, still is perfectly legal. Possibly as no other video game has ever used the concept since. But with Endorphin giving out such evil, corruptive proclamations, such as You're beautiful, and I feel joyful, there wasn't exactly that much of a rush to push through such a legislation. Suffice to say, no. No one was turned into a rampaging axe murderer or became the next Jim Jones from playing Endorphin. All that happened, ultimately, was a slightly above puzzle game received millions in free publicity thanks to some fear-mongering tabloids. And that was about it. However, the negative press did bring some stigma. Endorphin would be licensed out to the PlayStation and Super Famicom in Japan a year later, but was completely rebranded and rethemed into Q on Par and its PC original has never been re-released digitally or physically since. So it's considered abandonware today. So, if you ever fancy being brainwashed with reassurance, there's a link in the video description below. All is well. Only, it's only a game. Why do you have to be mad? Hello, you. Thanks ever so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to be first to see future episodes. Click on the bell if you already are to remain notified, and be sure to check out my other videos. And if you want to be super awesome, check out my Patreon, where you can not only see new videos up to a week early, 
but also completely ad and sponsorship free. But thanks ever so much again for watching and I'll be seeing you next time. Goodbye, you.